And so therefore we have, first of all, the testimony of these people in the Bible. And then there is the non-biblical testimony. And you probably have heard it said by some people, well, after all, we don't know anything at all about Jesus except what we get in the Bible, and uh, that is, uh, is obviously not reliable. You've probably heard people make statements like that. That is, there is no evidence of the existence of Christ outside of the Bible. Well, my friends, that's not true. There are very clearly at least 19 pagan writers that refer to Christ. Early pagan writers that refer to Christ. And I don't expect you to get all these down, but I'll name them for you. Tacitus, who was a great historian of Rome. Suetonius, also an historian. Pliny the Younger, one of the uh, leaders of the Roman Empire. Epictetus, Lucian, Aristides, Galenus, Lampridius, Diocasius, Emerius, Labanius, Ammianus, Marcellinus, Eunapius, Zosimus, and some wrote entire works about him, such as Lucian, Celsus, the first great uh, antagonist to Christianity that wrote a whole book attacking Christianity, Porphyry, uh, Heracles, and Julian the Apostate. There are 19 pagan writers that refer to Jesus Christ in the first several centuries of this era. I mentioned Tacitus. He was the most famous of the historian of the, uh, of the Romans. He was born in 55 AD, right in the middle of the New Testament period that you're reading about in your Bibles. And he gives an account of Christianity which includes these facts. He talks about the Neronian persecution of the Christians at Rome, which happened in 64. He incidentally attests that Christ was put to death as a malefactor by Pontius Pilate in the reign of Tiberius, that he was the founder of the Christian sect, and that the latter took its rise in Judea and spread in spite of the ignominious death of Christ and the hatred and contempt it encountered throughout the empire so that vast multitudes of them were most cruelly put to death in the city of Rome alone as early as the year 64. He also bears valuable testimony in the fifth book of his history together with Josephus uh, of Christ's fulfillment of prophecy concerning the destruction of Jerusalem and the overthrow of the Jewish people. Now, folks, this is the most significant historian of Rome. Born in 55 AD of the middle of the first century, telling fact after fact after fact after fact of the major facts of the life and death and resurrection of Christ. And then there is Celsus that I mentioned, who was the first great anti-Christian writer, who was the first one to write an entire book against Christianity. He was a Greek philosopher in the second century, and his book entitled A True Discourse is quoted by a number of the fathers. And he uses all of the weapons of learning, philosophy, common sense, wit, sarcasm, and dramatic animation of style to disprove and ridicule Christianity and its followers. And yet, my friends, may I point out to you that neither Tacitus, the historian, nor Celsus, nor Pliny, nor any of these, no one in the early centuries questioned that he was an actual historical figure. Celsus refers to the Gospels of Matthew and Luke and John, and in all makes 80 allusions to or quotations from the New Testament. And these are some of the things that this man in the second century makes allusion to about Christ. 
He takes notice of his birth from a virgin in a small village of Judea, the adoration of the wise men, the slaughter of the infants by order of Herod, the flight of e to Egypt, where he supposes Christ learned the charms of the magicians, his residence in Nazareth, his baptism, the descent of the Holy Spirit in the shape of a dove, the voice from heaven, the election of his disciples, his friendship with publicans and other low people, his cures of the lame and the blind and raising the dead, the betrayal by Judas, the denial of Peter, the principle circumstances in the history of the passion and crucifixion and also the resurrection of Christ. Now he perverts and abuses these but he refers to all of them and he tries to distort them in some way. This is the first great anti-Christian writer, Celsus. Does that sound like a mythological figure? How much easier would it have been for him to simply say, ah, the whole thing is a myth, Jesus never lived, we don't want to take any of it seriously, like Russell or Madeleine Murray O'Hare would say in the 20th century, it's not worth looking into, it never happened at all, it's all a myth. And let me conclude with another Jewish writer, and that is Flavius Josephus, or Josephus. Now, what Tacitus was to the Romans, Josephus was to the Jews. Josephus was the greatest historian of the Jews. He wrote the antiquities of the Jews. He wrote the Jewish wars. He was a general in the Jewish army. And uh, in his book, The Antiquities of the Jews, book 18, chapter 3, section 3, he says this. By the way, when was he born? Is this a 9th century, 7th century, 6th century writer? Josephus was born in 37 A.D., as shortly after Christ was crucified. About this time lived Jesus, he says, a wise man, if it be proper to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Greeks. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the instigation of the principal men among us who had condemned him to the cross, those who had loved him at first did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again on the third day. The divine prophets having foretold these and many other wonderful things concerning him. And the sect of Christians so named after him are not extinct to this day. Now, that's Josephus, the antiquity of the Jews. This passage is viciously attacked. Why and on what basis? Why, it's obvious that they can't stand the idea that Josephus, who was not only a general but a priest, would ever have written anything like this. And so, therefore, it must be an interpolation. It must have been inserted into the antiquities of the Jews by some Christian writer at a later date. My friends, there is absolutely not one single thread of evidence of that fact. Every single manuscript of the antiquities of the Jews, with no exception, contains that passage. Therefore, those who object to it can do it on no external and objective basis, but purely on their own subjective and emotional hatred of what he says. The evidence is all on our side. And the fact that he couldn't make a statement like that? Well, he surrendered to the Romans went and lived in Rome and enjoyed a very uh, wonderful and resplendent life in uh, Rome. He didn't seem to have too much trouble with his, his convictions in doing that. He may very easily have done this as well. So here we have 19 pagan writers, three Jewish writers, as well as 27 writers of the New Testament, all of whom testify that Jesus lived, was a real, concrete, historical personage, and that we have not received any cunningly devised fables or myths, but there were eyewitnesses of his majesty, and that is the foundation of the faith that we hold. Therefore, be not impressed. When someone tells you Jesus was just a myth or a fable, Instead of being aghast, what you really want to do is just sort of smile and chuckle and say, 
You really don't know the facts, do you? 